Welcome to the Cataraqui Woods Dental Implant Institute, a nonprofit organization dedicated to furthering both education and research in the field of oral implantology. My name is Dr. Waji Khan. I also run the Top Gun Dental Implant Study Club. For more information, please visit www.topgundisc.com. So today we have a case presentation which is all about full upper arch rehabilitation. So in this case we basically have a 51 year old female who presents to the office with a chief complaint that she's seeking a more aesthetic smile not too fake looking and something which is going to provide her with more function. She's open to all options that are available. So uh, upon presentation you can see that this patient basically is partially dentulous on the maxillary left. She also is partially dentulous in the mandible but has a sufficient number of teeth to maintain a stable uh, arch. Uh, all, as well in the maxilla there's some issues with respect to caries so as we look at the retracted view you can see that there are there's some fixed uh, crown and bridge work uh, in the uh, maxilla. Uh, some of the margins especially the maxillary central uh, right and lateral right incisors uh, have margins which are not perhaps the most aesthetically appealing. Upon radiographic examination it becomes apparent that the uh, uh, left central incisor has caries and that the upper left lateral incisor is broken off at the gum line. There's also an edentulous spot uh, between for, for the upper right first premolar and a bit of uh, interesting tipping going on on the maxillary upper right uh, second premolar. So with respect to this case, taking a look at this panorex, uh, rate, panorol radiograph, you can see one can see the uh, the caries on the upper uh, left central incisor and the upper left second uh, lateral incisor, uh, second, not second, but the upper left lateral incisor, and one can see the stable arch that exists in the mandible, uh, not notwithstanding uh, the caries that does exist on the uh, lower left uh, molar and uh, some of the just incisal wear that's apparent on some of those mandibular anteriors. So a treatment plan for this patient. So we go over a number of options for this patient and basically she was, like I said, she was open to all uh, treatment options. There was no evidence that she was uh, overclosed or anything along those lines. Uh, there was no other uh, comorbidities that were going to cause any issues for us. So uh, we discussed a number of options, but what she wanted from, from us was basically the placement of five dental implants along with bone graft uh, with injectable PRF and advanced PRF membranes uh, in the maxillary uh, right, or sorry, maxillary left, uh, clean up the lower teeth and basically restore the exposed areas of dentin. There really wasn't too much to do there other than you know basic caries removal, uh, perhaps just give us ourselves a more ideal uh, clusal plane uh, to be conservative, you know, perhaps clean and whiten the teeth. And uh, what's the thing? Uh, uh, just uh, uh, you know, uh, sorry, there was no requirement to basically, uh, uh, or evidence that she was overclosed or required to do anything along those lines. And then basically the provision of a five unit uh, fixed uh, bridge on the top left, a single screw retained crown on the first upper right premolar and five Emax crowns on the remaining uh, maxillary teeth. And then lastly, like I like to do with all my cases, uh, some sort of a bite plate and appropriate follow-up setup. So here's that shot of the patient. Uh, once again, from the occlusal perspective, here's removal of the maxillary central, uh, the left central and lateral incisors. You can see that on the maxillary right, we've already performed implant surgery and there's a suture uh, basically retaining that implant in place. We go ahead and basically uh, use our uh, precision and pilot drills to uh, obtain our initial osteotomy in the maxillary uh, left central incisor in, in that dense palatal bone trying to get a screw retained position which obviously reveals that fairly large buckle gap jump junction. Uh, her buckle plates in these cases were intact and so we were able to do this procedure for her and one can see that we've tried to place this implant about three millimeters from the proposed uh, the proposed gingival margin and the purpose for this is to have a nice emergence profile so basically it's just like boom tooth that you actually have a nice gradation through the bone and the soft tissue so it looks like this tooth is naturally emerging from the tissue and is not something which is fake and one can see another shot here where we basically have taken an impression coping and placed that into the primary implant to basically use that as a guide with respect to angulation so that when we're placing the other implants uh, we can use this guide to sort of help us uh, keep these implants somewhat parallel so that when we are trying to get a draw for our actual bridge the implant retained bridge uh, we're going to be able to take advantage of the internal hexes and not have one of those multi-unit abutments or one of those uh, implant uh, prostheses that just sort of sits on the face of the implants like we've seen in many cases so here we've placed the second implant now to place implant 
uh, three and four, we're going to have to make, make a flap and expose the bone. And so you can see here, we're basically going ahead with our series of uh, drills. Uh, these implants are MIS-7 implants, and so basically there are you use uh, two simple drills, and then the MIS system has a final drill that comes with every single implant. So you can see the osteotomies have been completed, and that the implants are now being placed and torqued into position at the appropriate bone level. So once we basically continue along here, you can see we've got a lot of photographs here to basically document this. Cover screws basically go on. And after the cover screws have been placed, uh, we take a panoral radiograph. And here you can see that we've basically gone ahead and gotten bicortical fixation of an implant in the maxillary right first premolar and four implants placed in the maxillary left with bicortical fixation of the most posterior most implant. And that we've gone ahead and restored those mandibular teeth for this patient as well. And once again, we take a look at our flap here. So in any sort of case, we like to usually add bone uh, in some cases just to augment the, the thickness. You can see in that premolar region that perhaps the bone is not quite as thick as we want. So we go ahead and irrigate the solution for pollution as dilution. And then basically go ahead and augment bone graft inside these areas and squirt some, some injectable PRF on top of this in order to basically get a nice clot and get nice sticky bone. Platelet-rich fiber membranes are then added on top and tucked into or undermined between the buccal or the palatal and the buccal flaps. And then we use 3.0 silk locking uh, continuous suture to basically hold this whole complex in place. And you'll see by the series of radiographs here, you know, this, I mean, perhaps this case presentation only takes a few minutes, but the actual process of suturing takes a lot of time. I actually have one colleague of mine down in the States who basically uh, filmed the whole suturing procedure. And I believe the suturing procedure took about three times the amount of time that the implant placement procedure took, which is an uh, interesting point to note for those of you who are watching this. So PRF is placed on top of the other two implants as well, and they are held in place by a figure eight silk suture. So post-op checklist, ensure that the transitional prosthesis is placed if you are using a transitional prosthesis. Uh, post-op instructions are provided to the patient in terms of uh, care of the surgical site, oral hygiene and rinses. Post-op medications have been provided for the patient in the form of analgesics and antibiotics. The post-op follow-up has been appointment has been scheduled for the patient. I usually like to see my patients after about a week, and that the patient is fit for discharge with the responsible adult escort. So upon return, you'll see that this patient uh, suture removal. This is what the patient looks like. You can see there is some sloughing of the tissue on the palatal aspect. Uh, when I made my incision for the uh, implants in the maxillary left, uh, I probably should have been a little bit more over the ridge as opposed to palatally. I ended up in one of those uh, those blood watershed areas, and basically we've had sloughing of the tissue. The good news here is that basically what this leads to is an increased amount of connective tissue that's going to be available for our stage two procedure. So at the stage two procedure, we basically go ahead and place some healing abutments for the patient. You can see that these three millimeter healing abutments, three millimeter straight healing abutments uh, are in fairly nicely. And when the patient does return, uh, we can go ahead and basically remove the crowns that we planned on the maxillary right. And as you can see, there were some fairly aggressive preparations here previously on these prostheses. And basically, we just had to go around and try to clean these up for the patient. Uh, so once again, we uh, go ahead and place some healing about sorry, so we place some impression copings onto all of the implants after the stage two procedure. Uh, this panorex has basically been taken to demonstrate a few things that the healing abutments have been are uh, are seated and also just to make sure that there's no periapical lesions or anything that's new that's developed. Uh, yes, I realize someone out there is probably say, saying to me, hmm, what's going on with that mandibular right first premolar? Uh, yes, I realize there's a post there that looks like it may be where it shouldn't be. Uh, we did probe around this tooth. We did every endodontic procedure uh, or endodontic test on this tooth, tapping on it, making sure there's no sensitivity to percussion, no, pr no, pro no probing depth, using a uh, periodontal, pro sorry, a uh, endodontic probe, uh, no mobility, uh, and there really was no any progression uh, of this tooth along as treatment went along. So we basically decided just to leave this as one of those wonderful watch and wait uh, sort of scenarios. So looking at the shot with the crown preps, retraction cords, everything in place, one can see the nice tissue. This patient had excellent oral hygiene around the implants and also that the tissues are nicely retracted. And here's a basically a frontal view of the exact same thing. Now, for those of you who have never done this before, you need to basically make sure that when you're doing any multi-unit case that you take your impression copings and lock them together. 
What can you lock them together with? Well, basically, you want to lock them together with something which is going to ha set slowly uh, so as to not have a lot of polymerization shrinkage. So uh, the literature basically would indicate something like GC pattern resin, Duralay inlay pattern resin. Those things are the best. Uh, the second best would be something like composite resin. And that the worst would be something like triad or the, the light-cured polymethyl methacrylate uh, materials though i do have a colleague who argues with me and says that you can the the triad or polymethyl methacrylate as long as you use them in small increments uh, they're not bad either so it means whatever whatever suits your fancy whatever works best for you so here's another shot of those uh, those copings locked together we go ahead and take a fixture level impression uh open tray uh for the for the implants and the uh, actual crowns themselves uh, this gets poured up by the lab and after sorry well, it gets poured up after I add the implant analogs and stuff and you can just sort of see here the vertical orientation of all the implants and afterwards the lab basically was able to send us a prosthesis after uh, you know appropriate uh, you know, mounting your models using a face bow uh, and basically appropriate uh, occlusal records and stuff the lab's able to basically send you some uh, nice porcelain work which you can basically check out on your model so we go ahead and starting with the basic go ahead and insert the first implant crown you can see that that is nicely seated uh, there's no contacts to value at this point in time which makes it kind of kind of nice and we can basically do a, a cursory occlusal analysis basically this is the model with all of the uh, prostheses or porcelain work on it with sort of the incisal edges viewed uh, as I mentioned this patient did not want a fake looking smile so she was not seeking sort of like the you know da vinci uh, dental studios uh, uh, you know the extreme makeover uh, veneer sort of appearance she wanted something which was going to look a little bit more natural and you know usual for someone her age so you can see in this shot here basically just the porcelain work on the right and the bridge which has been removed so we go ahead and we insert that that uh, uh, screw retained uh, implant bridge for the patient you see that that's fitting nice and tight up against the tissue so that ischemia the whiteness in the tissue should go away in about five or ten minutes and the basic purpose of this is to push up right up against the tissue and make sure you're getting a nice emergence profile uh, for this prosthesis so this you can see is a is a frontal shot you can see that we got the occlusal plane correct on this patient which is always a, a nice thing it's always nice when you're not seeing canting in the patient and you're you're inserting it and the patient's all happy and excited and you have to go back and tell the patient hey, i gotta send this back to the lab because we forgot to take uh, you go through the step of either a, a, a Facebook or taking the proper uh, the proper uh, occlusal plane uh, record for the lab. So once you, once you can see here, we clean up all the other teeth and cement all the remaining crowns following standard crown and bridge uh, insertion procedure. Make sure you insert each crown, check each crown individually, then you want to check them all together, check your contact, check the margins, check the occlusion, all that sort of stuff. So taking a look here, one can see there's a bit of a, a black triangle that does exist between the front teeth and maybe perhaps the lateral and central incisor as well. This will be a Deviated very easily once again study by tar now as long as your contact point is five millimeters from the bone you will form a papilla so just using some regular rubber tipping uh, in this patient is going to help promote papilla formation inside this area here's an occlusal shot of the exact same thing and you can see that that erythema that did exist sorry the ischemia that exit not erythema erythema we read the ischemia that existed for the patient in uh, the uh, in the uh, implant uh, bridge area that has been resolving and in this occlusal shot you can see that as well once again here's the model for everything completed here's that black triangle that we demonstrated we're going to send the patient home with a rubber tip and basic instructions to rubber tip this area two or three times a day until this, the tissue looks a bit red and that will basically help accelerate or promote uh, you know pap papilla formation uh, inside this area and once you can see this is the patient returning after a week uh, there is a better papilla which has formed this is the patient at the one year follow-up one can appreciate uh, that things are looking fairly nice for this patient uh, with the papilla and here is the occlusal shot once again just demonstrating that there has been nice maintenance of the soft tissue envelope and the buccal aspect uh, despite the fact that we had extracted teeth and uh, and placed immediate implants uh, once just a mirror shot just showing the incisal ledges and basically the radiographs just to demonstrate that the bone levels have been stable after a period of about a year. And radiographically, you can see once again that after one year's time, everything looks pretty good. Uh, everything else has been dealt with and still that maxillary, man, that mandibular right first premolar is still a, 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 a unicorn of a presentation. It's still doing well. So on behalf of the entire dental treatment team at the Cataraqui Woods Dental Implant Institute and all the folks at the Top Gun 
Dental Implant Study Club. I want to thank you for listening in to this case presentation.